who like has mostly used small scopes in my life. Yeah. What would you say like if I won the lottery and wanted to buy one of these things? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'd say welcome. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, I mean, you'd be surprised uh, the number of people that you know, maybe don't have tons of money, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, people, serious amateurs, you know, that are into astrophotography and, and really think of the number of people that buy boats or motorcycles or pontoon boats. I mean, this is just a different hobby, yes. right? It is, and yeah. So to spend, you know, $30,000 or even $50,000 on your astronomy rig, you know, is, uh, there's a lot of people doing it. Yeah. I know a lot of people ask me, like, how many, how have I afforded the gear that I already have, and I was like, "Well, it's been a process over the years." <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, yeah, you know, I play guitar. I have lots of guitars. Mm -hmm. Slowly over the years, mm -hmm. and and I always look at, you know, you go to Sweetwater or Guitar Center, and you look at that industry, and it's very much, you know, a bunch of people passionate about what they're doing, just like the astronomy industry, you know, and and people spend money on their hobbies. Like it, um, we get, we have lots of repeat customers, mm -hmm. people that buy one scope and come back buy another one, buy another one, we come out with something new. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's, there's people super into the industry and super into, you know, fine equipment, which there's so much fine equipment here at Neef, you know, at all different price points. <laughs> now, I imagine a lot of science gets done with your equipment too? Uh, yeah, yeah. We have universities and professional astronomy. Um, we have a lot of customers doing that. We have, we just sold a one meter RC up on Chara, the Chara Array, which is an interferometer up on Mount Wilson, which is, I'm super, you know, Mount Wilson was always one of those yeah. cathedrals of uh, astronomy. Mm -hmm. And so we have a telescope there now, and we also have a telescope on Mount Palomar, which is, now we have two of them there. How big are those? Uh, we have a one meter, and I think the other one was like a 24 inch. Okay. So, yeah. Now, question, are you guys wrapping your own carbon fiber yet, or is that still something outsourced? No, we outsource the carbon fiber. We have good vendors for that. What we basically do as a company is if something is like only made by aerospace people, mm -hmm. you know, so it's way too expensive, we do it ourselves. Okay. Or, or if it's something that's hard to uh, find someone to do it, then we do it ourselves. So we do a lot of things. We, we, make our, we build our own direct drive motors. Mm -hmm. We actually wind the coils for them. Oh, wow. Um, we design most of our electronics, but we also use industrial uh, motor controllers. Um, we, uh, we grind, we machine our own mirrors, so the shape of the mirror, the light weighting of the mirror, and then we grind them and figure them. We uh, optics machines for making big mirrors, even like a 12, 12 and a half inch mm -hmm. telescope, which maybe isn't that big to, to this uh, group, um, is still a big mirror in the optics industry. Mm -hmm. So the machines that are out there are not really made to make mirrors like that. Mm -hmm. So we've designed our own uh, opt computerized optics machines. Um, you know, so we've, you know, like 20 machines and test bays everywhere and, you know, that's... I'm a machinist myself, but my channel knows that, okay. so I, I can appreciate all the, the immense amount of work that, in, in, I guess you could say, infrastructure goes into, like, having those kind of resources. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so we, uh, we have a nice big machine shop, too, mm -hmm. so we do all our machining, all our welding, you know, for all these components. Are you guys um, laser welding, or is it still by hand? It, it's, it's by hand. All this is still by hand. But the design of these is they, uh, you know, they, they fit together. So you assemble the thing together, tongue and groove, mm -hmm. fit together, then you first tack weld it, and then you do the real welds on it. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, and I, I can definitely appreciate your machining because I've looked over it and it's good. <laughs> Some of those bigger mirrors, you must have to, like, take into consideration maybe, like, how they change shape maybe as they different ways? Is that something you... Or do you try to build them like stiff so that they don't do that? Uh, well, I'm definitely. Out of my league here, so. <laughs> I mean, look, a, a big. So on long mirrors, we hold them at the center. Okay. So we have a core hole in the center, mm -hmm. and we hold them at the center, and you have to account for your change in your gravity vector. When you're pointed like this, it might go like this, and when you're pointed like this, it may bend back. Mm -hmm. So you have to FEA everything to make sure we're staying in our diffraction limited tolerances okay. of the way we hold it. The other thing you have to account for is we use a few silica, which is almost a zero expansion glass. It hardly changes its shape with temperature at all. Mm -hmm. But the aluminum 
uh, hub that's holding it changes its shape a lot. Aluminum moves yeah. a lot with temperature. So you have to have flexures built into it to account for that so you, under temperature change, you don't uh, warp the mirror. Um, so very interesting, very interesting. It's a lot, a lot into. We always joke that you never stop learning with telescopes, <laughs> and we're always learning. We design something new, and then telescopes kick your butt again. You know. And you, now that diffraction limit is that a fixed number for all your scopes, or does it vary based on the size? Well, diffraction limit is the uh, is basically. And once again, I'm out of my league here. <laughs> Diffraction limit is basically how well light focuses. If you have a, if you're looking at a star, it's a point source, mm -hmm. you know, out at near infinity, and you focus it down to a point, it actually doesn't focus down to a point, it focuses down to a thing called an airy disk okay. and a diffraction pattern. So there's, an, there's a kind of a disk and then rings that go around it, and that's really because light is acting like a wave, mm -hmm. uh, in this case, and it, and it forms this fraction, diffraction disk. So we want to focus all the light uh, better than a diffraction disk. So, so light is the limitation to how well the telescope focuses. Okay. And that varies with size. That diffraction disk size, if you double the size of the telescope, you half the size of the airy disk. Okay. So the bigger telescopes, you know, are even harder to make. The tolerances get tighter. Yeah, I imagine. Now, this guy behind us, I know on one side there's a loss mini plate. Yep. The other side, what's, what's this larger type of dovetail called? Um, we, it's just plain standard dovetail. Yeah, so we just have a, you know, we were making bigger telescopes, and uh, on our smaller telescopes, like 14s on down, we use the same Los Mandy standard, mm -hmm. and uh, this is sort of the plane wave standard on the other side. So for holding, you know, we started off making 20 inch telescopes, and we're like, and yeah, we need a big, you know, <laughs> big dovetail to hold this thing. <laughs> All right. Hey, Richard, that was really awesome. I learned a lot. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you very much.